Hello and thank you for joining me for LMKR's Introducing Geoverse Geophysics webinar. Geoverse Geophysics is the new geophysical interpretation package for geographics. Uh, we've always had seismic interpretation in geographics with size vision, but with Geoverse Geophysics, we are taking it to a whole new level. We've added a lot of new features, and the biggest one of these new features is our new 3D viewer. So now you can view all of your 2D and 3D seismic data in a 3D space. You can look at your horizon surfaces and your faults. You can even add wells and draw well-related data along the well bore. We have several advanced visualization techniques like co-blending and voxel rendering that will help you get even more insight into your data. Our new LOD format makes it so that you can add very large files of seismic, over 100 gigabytes of seismic, for example, and view them in 3D without taking a hit to the performance. In the new 3D environment, you can also pick your horizons and your faults, so you can mark your seed pegs, you can edit them, you can run the auto trackers to create surfaces, so basically complete horizon and fault interpretation in 3D. And that's not all. Uh, we've also added an updated map view that lets you add multiple surfaces, including layers from GeoAtlas. Uh, it interacts seamlessly with the new 3D view. You can display your 3D surveys, your 2D lines, your wells, so a very versatile map view included in the new module. We have made big improvements to our velocity modeling workflows as well. So now you can use your models for depth conversion of horizons and you can look at velocity values extracted from the model and displayed directly on your seismic sections. We've also added support to import velocity cubes created externally and then use them as your active velocity model for your interpretation and your entire geographics project. And of course, all of this is presented in a beautiful user interface with very intuitive workflows. Uh, one of the most important things was for us was backward compatibility. Uh, so we made sure that all of your existing interpretations work right out of the box and you don't have to worry about recreating any of your existing work. Um, right, so with that, I'll now move on to the demonstration and quickly show you some of the highlights of our new package. I have an interpretation open here and like I mentioned, we are fully backward compatible. All your existing interpretations, your horizon picks, false seismic data, velocity models, all your work is available and will run right out of the box. So you don't have to worry about losing any part of your existing interpretations. Okay, so here I have the main map view of Geoverse Geophysics displayed and we've added a new 3D view toolbar that lets you interact with this map. And you can use this toolbar to open seismic and other data directly in the new 3D environment. Uh, so if you want to open an inline, for example, I can just select that from the map and it's going to launch a new instance of my 3D view and now I can look at my inline in 3D. And we support multiple 3D views. So if I go back to my map, I can switch this to new 3D view and I can draw say an arb line. And now this arb line is going to show up in a separate 3D view. This does not launch a new instance of the module. Instead, it puts this new 3D view next, uh, next to the existing one as a separate tab. So both of them are contained in the same instance. Um, but I have my inline and my outline displayed in separate 3D views. But once in, I'm inside my 3D view, now I can uh, add data to it independently. It is completely self-contained. So I don't have to switch back and forth between the two interfaces to add data. I can use these buttons up here to add uh, maybe a cross line. I can even add a time slice here. And I can move these around as well. So I can grab this with my mouse. I can put it at, me, at a new location. I can use the slider and the ribbon to move my section as well or I can specify a value and the section will jump to the value that I've specified. And this is not just limited to seismic. All of my interpretation data is available in what we call the interpretation tree. So I have my 3D seismic, all the surveys, all, all the versions associated with each survey, my 2D programs, all the lines in each program, my horizons, my faults, any wells that may be part of your interpretation. So everything is available here in the interpretation tree. And I can use this tree to add things to my scene. So if I want to look at this 2D line, I'm going to hit the plus icon and this 2D line is going to pop up in my 3D view here. I can drag a horizon and drop it in my scene and that's going to display this horizon in 3D. And if you're looking for something particular and you don't want to you know, go down the, this list, reading down the list, you can even use the search functionality. So if I was looking for, for a fault called fault A, for example, I can search that. The tree is going to filter and show me just my search results, and I can add that to the scene as well. And if this particular fault is something that you work with very often, and you don't want to be searching for it every time through your tree, uh, you can click this little ribbon icon, 
and now this is going to uh, this poll is going to appear right at the top of your tree readily available when you need to use it so everything that is available in the in the interpretation is listed in the interpretation tree but to get an idea of what you're looking at what is actually a part of your scene uh, we have the scene tree so the scene tree basically lists everything that is available in your scene. So I can see that I have a survey called the F3 original with an inline, a cross line and a time slice in here. I have a 2D line, I have a horizon called the top forest and I have a fault called fault A. And when I add stuff to my scene, so if I go back to my interpretation tree and I add this survey, the survey is going to be added to my scene and in my and it's going to update my scene tree as well so I have this new survey under the 3d seismic node called f3 ai and we support multiple surveys in the same 3d scene so I can now add inlines and cross lines to this survey as well so I can use these buttons to add an inline here for example I can also add a cross line either to this survey or to the survey that I just added and just by clicking here and now that's going to add my cross line and my inline. and the new sections show up under the relevant relevant survey node in my scene tree as well so I can see that I have inline 669 and a cross line 1124 open for the F3 AI survey uh, in this particular scene and the scene tree is more than just a list of everything in your scene you can actually use the scene tree to interact with your data as well so if this horizon is cluttering up your view for example you can temporarily hide it using the eye icon so it's basically hidden now it disappears from view um, if you're done working with this cross line and you don't want it to be a part of your scene anymore you can use this cross icon to remove it and now since not it is not a part of the scene anymore it is also removed from the scene tree and you might have also noticed uh, this labels next to each seismic section in the scene tree. Uh, this is the data version that is applied to the section. By default, when I add a section to the to the scene, it looks at the active version for my survey and displays that along my section. So kind of like a default uh, view for my section. But I can click this list and I can change the version that is applied to my section. So for this time slice, for example, I can switch it to semblance. Now it's going to read data from the semblance volume and display it along my horizon. Um, right, so, so here you're looking at data from the semblance volume now. <clears throat> and when I navigate this section to a new location, it's going to jump to the new location, but the version associated with it will now remain the same. So it is still saying, showing me data. <coughs> Excuse me. So it is still showing me data from the semblance volume. And you might have also noticed that when I switched versions, the color palette applied to the section also changed. That's because I can define the palette associated with each version. So I have uh, for this particular survey, the semblance version is set as grayscale. So every time I switch to the semblance volume, it's going to show up. Uh, it's going to switch the color palette and the section is going to show up in grayscale. Um, uh, so these, these, this, these options are also available for horizons, uh, but slightly differently. So if I turn on my horizon, and now the, by default, we show the time values uh, draped along the horizon. Uh, so these are the values for your picks, the time values for your picks. And if I turn on my color bar, you can see exactly what each value, what each color represents. Uh, but you can use this list in the scene tree to apply different data along the horizon. So if you have velocity values computed for this horizon, you can show those along the horizon surface, depth values if you have those. Or you can also extract data from, from a seismic cube and drape that along the horizon. So if I choose custom versions, then from the display settings for the horizon, I can choose which version of which version of data I want to apply on, on the horizon. So if I want to look at the envelope uh, data from the envelope volume along this horizon, I can click envelope and now it's going to read data from the envelope volume and it's going to display it along my horizon. And I can change the color palette to make it something more readable for example and there you go so now I'm looking at the envelope data along my horizon surface displayed along my horizon surface for faults these options are slightly different still I can either look at the fault as a surface uh, which is also the default behavior or I can switch to the segment only mode which uh, shows me just the fault sticks which are the actual picks that were made uh, that were made by the interpreter by an interpreter and uh, were used to create that surface so you can look at the fault as a surface or in segment only mode another mode available for both horizons and faults is the on section only mode 
Now what that does is, if I turn on this inline and just bring it somewhere where it intersects both the horizon and the fog, uh, so what the on section mode does is it just gives me the intersection of the horizon and the fault uh, with with seismic sections, and it just gets rid gets rid of the surface. So I can switch my horizon to on section only mode. Now I cannot see the horizon anymore, but I can see exactly where it intersects with my section. Similarly for faults, I can switch to on section only here, and now I'm just going to get an intersection of the of my fault uh, with my seismic section. And when I navigate it to a new location, it's going to show me how the fault and the horizon are intersecting with the horizon at this new location. I can bring in my cross line even, uh, move it to a new location here, and now I can see exactly how my fault and my horizon interact uh, with my seismic. Okay, so staying with uh, staying with these uh, these versions, you might have noticed you might have noticed an option called the active velocity model. Now this appears for all surveys and all 2D lines. But if you look at the list of surveys uh, in my interpretation tree, this does not appear in, in, the, in that list of versions. That's because this is not a physical file that lives on your hard drive. Instead, what this option does is, if I switch to the active velocity model, it's going to go to my velocity model, which I have set up, and it's going to read values along this section and display them on my section. And when I navigate this section to a new location, it's going to recompute the velocity values at this new location and it's going to show me those values along the section. To set my velocity model, I have to go back to my uh, main interface to the velocity manager and here I can choose from a lot of different types of velocity models and all of the velocity models available for each type. Uh, here we've introduced a new option called the external volume which lets you import velocity cubes to your interpretation and use that as your velocity model. So if you have a velocity model that you created outside of geographics that you really like and you want to use as your active velocity model, you can do that using this option. But whatever the velocity model that you use, uh, when you switch to the active velocity model from the scene tree, it's going to read values from whatever velocity model that you have set up and it's going to display them along your section. Okay, so, so far I've been telling you how to look at you know, different versions of data along your section. How about looking at two versions of data simultaneously on a single section. Uh, we can do that too using something we call co-blending. Uh, to co-blend data on a section, uh, you go to the display settings for that section and enable co-blending. Now from the parameters, I can choose two versions. One is my base version, which I'm going to leave as my amplitude data, and the second is my overlay version, which I'm going to choose for this example as semblance. Uh, and when I move my slider to 100, and I'm just going to close this here so that you can get a better view. Uh, when I move my slider here to 100, now I'm just looking at my overlay data, which is my semblance versions, and that's what you see here in the 3D scene as well. When I move this slider to 0, that's just my amplitude, uh, my base version, which is my amplitude, and that's what you see in my scene as well. But when I put this somewhere in the middle, now what I get is I get a blend of the two versions displayed simultaneously on that same section. So now uh, I can see how my semblance and my, input, and my input data actually relate to each other, how they interact with each other. And this is pretty useful when you are picking horizons and faults. Um, and in many other workflows, you can also do this for velocity models. So you can have your seismic data as your background and you can overlay your velocities on top of it. Um, you can also co-blend data along horizon surfaces. So you can have uh, you can have a horizon surface and you can take data from two volumes and drape it along the horizon surface and display that as well. So a lot of different options available uh, as far as co-blending is concerned. Another advanced visualiz visualization technique that we have is voxel rendering for volume visualization. Uh, so I'm going to open a new 3D view uh, because this one is starting to get a little cluttered up. To visualize a volume, the first thing I have to do is I have to add a probe. So a probe is basically just a cube with data displayed on all six sides. So I'm just going to define a probe here, give the inline range, give it the cross line range, and then the time, and I'm going to hit the add button, and that's going to add my probe to the scene. Now once the probe is in the scene, uh, let me just stretch it a little bit vertically so that we can get a better idea of it. Now just like any other section, I can switch the version applied to this, so I can change the data version 
to something like average energy and now I have a probe in my scene that has average energy data displayed on all six sides and by definition a probe just has data on the outside so if I move, take my camera inside this probe it has no data here it's completely empty on the inside just data on the sides to fill this data up with this, to fill this probe up with data I'll use an option called render volume when I click this option it's going to take data from the average energy volume and it's going to fill it up uh, inside the probe and I would also like to point out here that we have a new format called the LOD format which uh, which plays in the plays with the resolution in such a way that it lets you uh, visualize very large volumes uh, render very large seismic sections uh, say 100 gigabytes of seismic without taking a hit to the performance um, okay so getting back to the volume though uh, now I have data inside this probe as well and when I try to take my camera inside you can't see anything on the inside because well it's got data in here uh, so on the face of it it's not really useful for me because I can't really see what data I have inside this probe to be able to analyze this data to be able to make most of your volume visualization you'll have to use our new color palette tool uh, which comes complete with a histogram so you can do the basic stuff here you can change your color palettes uh, you can even modify them to suit your your needs, your specific needs. Um, you can you have a histogram here, and you can adjust the min and max graphically. Um, you can flip colors, so all of the basic stuff. But the coolest feature here is the ability to make selective amplitudes transparent. So if I'm looking at the average energy cube here, for example, and I just want to look at areas with very high average energy, I'm not really interested in low energy areas. What I can do is I can drag my mouse along the histogram and I can hide these low energy areas. And I can adjust this a little bit. And now I'm left just with areas with very high average energy. And you can see that here. Uh, you can see exactly how your high average energy areas in this particular volume uh, look like in the subsurface. And if you want to you know, see how it relates with your data, how these uh, bodies or these structures relate with your data, I can also add an inline here, for example. So I can add an inline here. And now I can see exactly how it uh, sort of interacts or how it relates to my seismic data. And on top of this selective transparency that I applied using my color palette, I can use this transparency tool uh, to apply additional transparency on top of it. And I can see how exactly how my volume and my seismic sort of relate to each other. Okay, so, so far I have just shown you seismic data visualization, but we have the capability to add wells and well data to our scene as well. Uh, so let's just open a new 3D view. Adding wells to your scene is just like adding anything else, uh, any other data to your scene. So I can go down this interpretation tree and I can choose the wells that I want to add. So let's say I want to look at well number three, well number four, and I can just click the plus icon and add those wells to my scene. But if you have a lot of wells in your, in your interpretation, going down a list and choosing individual wells to add can become very tiring very quickly. Uh, so to overcome that problem, we have uh, the ability to filter your wells uh, based on existing well-based filters. So I can choose a filter, say I want to look at just wells that have poor data associated with it. I can run this filter and now that's going to filter all the wells in my interpretation and just bring the ones that have core data associated with it because that's the filter that I chose up here and then I can choose to you know choose the wells that I want from these and add them to my scene uh, now since I already have wells number three and four in my scene I can choose either to keep those wells or or not you know, when I add these wells so I'm just going to keep them for now hit ok and that's going to add the filter wells to my scene as well I'm going to add a cross line here as well uh, so that we can get a little perspective on where we are uh, in regards to our 3D survey. Um, okay, so when I add my wells to the scene, by default, I get the well symbol and the well bore. Uh, but we can show a lot more data than just that. If I go to the display settings for the well, here I can choose, you know, from everything from the symbol, from the very basic stuff like changing the color of the symbol, adding more information here. So if I want to look at, for example, the operator name or the well name, uh, next to the ID as well, I can do that. Uh, same thing for wellbore, I can choose 
uh, you know, the color of the board, the thickness, and then the more complex stuff. So I can choose to show all of the formations that are associated with this well here. Um, I can change the size of the formation tops. I can make it bigger. I can increase the information displayed. So let's say I also want to look at the measuring depth. I can do that. Uh, increase the font a little bit so that it's a, it's a little easier to read. And I can also ass assign individual colors to each formation. So if I want to make this red, for example, I can make this one yellow. Uh, so I can assign individual colors to each formation available in the well, or I can just choose a single color, hit apply, and that's going to choose uh, set the same color for each formation. I can also choose individual formations to turn on and off. So I can just, if I'm interested in just these four formations, these are the ones I can turn on, and they will be the only ones that are displayed along the well port. Similarly for fault cuts, um, I don't have any fault cuts right now in this data to show you, but the workflow is very same, uh, exactly the same as formation tops in fact. And so you can control the size, you can control individual fault cuts if you want to see, you can apply colors to, uh, to them as well. And then we have a few different options to show lock curves along your well. So uh, you can either choose to show two curves along the well bore, so I can choose the curve that I want to, uh, that I want to show. So for example, I'm going to go DT here and we can go to the configure menu. I can increase the track width a little bit so that I can see it better. Uh, for curve two, I can choose a different curve called GR, for example. Uh, increase the track width a little bit for this one as well so I can see it better. Uh, you can also display synthetics along the well bore here. So if you have synthetic data and you want to draw it along the well bore, you can, you can choose a synthetic for one of these as well. Uh, so you can put two curves right next to the lock curve or you can go to the lathe mode and you can choose a single curve that is drawn around the well board. So here now I have the gamma ray curve drawn around the well board. So I don't see the well board anymore. Instead, I see uh, the lock curve values uh, displayed along the well board. Uh, similarly, I have, I can show other borehole data along the board as well. So if I have production data, I can click that to show that. Cores, I can show those as well. If we have perforation and completion data, you can you can choose to turn on those on as well. If you have, if you have different stages that you want to turn on, you can choose which stages you want to see uh, for the completion data as well. Um, right. So now I have my well nicely set up. I have the symbol and the formation tops, lockers, just like I want them. But if I want to do this for each well in my scene, uh, especially if I have more than four wells in my scene, that's going to you know take a lot of time. And to overcome that, we have this apply all functionality, which lets you take the selected, the, take the settings from the selected well and apply them to all of the wells in your scene. Uh, so let's say I want to just take everything except the lock curves. Uh, so I'm going to check everything except lock curves, hit apply, and that's going to copy all of those settings to each well. Um, it's going to take the make the symbol, the formation tops, the production data, everything the same except for the lock curve setting because I selected, I did not select that setting, that is not copied over and everything else is. So that's pretty much all I have to show you as far as seismic visualization is, is uh, sorry, 3D visualization is concerned. Um, but we've also added a new map view in this module. So when I create a new map view, the first thing you'll notice is that uh, it replicates the main map view of Geoverse Geophysics. You see the same 3D surveys, 2D lines, wells, even the horizon surface and the color palette applied to that surface. They're all the same. That's because we don't want, we, most, most people put everything of importance on their main map view and every time you open a new map view here, we don't want you to waste time trying to recreate that main map view. So you have uh, most of that information available here already. But you can always add more stuff to it. So I can Go here and I can add a time slice, for example. I can add a fault surface. I can even bring in layers from Geo Atlas. I can select these layers and add them uh, to my map as well. And all of them will be added to my map. Um, and the scene tree works pretty much the same way as for 3D view. You just have a list of everything uh, that is available on your map in the scene tree. So I have a survey, a time slice associated with the survey. I have all these 2D lines, I have a horizon, a fault four wells that are available and in the geoatlas layers. Uh, so all of the, those are described in the scene tree. Now the time slice seems to be covering everything else up. Um, so I can see what is under the time slice by either using the transparency tool to see what exactly lies underneath this, trans uh, this time slice. Or if you want more control, you can go to the display order and you can set exactly the order you want your objects to appear in. So right now I have my layers that will appear on top of my fault, which will be on top of my horizon, and finally 
my time slice. When I hit OK, the display order is adjusted and now I can see my time slice is at the very bottom. And I can use these little buttons here as well to move the object up and down the display order and it's going to adjust the display order accordingly. Um, and our 3D views are also seamlessly integrated with our map views. So I can use these buttons here to open a section and I can choose an existing 3D view to add it to or I can create a new 3D view. I'm just going to create a new 3D view for now and this cross line is now going to appear in this new 3D view. Um, so now I have a lot of different 3D views open. Um, it, I can set this particular 3D view or any one of these uh, in fact as my default view so I can click this icon here and now that's going to set my 3D view 5 as my default view. This is really useful when you're interacting with different uh, 3D views and map views so uh, this option is now available more easily and is more visible. So if I go back to my map view and I open an inline for example uh, I can hit this inline button here and now the 3D view, the default 3D view appears here and I can click that and that's going to add my inline to my uh, default 3D view. Okay, so I'm just going to put this side by side because there's a few more things I want to show you. I can go to the layouts, uh, more layouts, and I'm going to put my map view on the left and my 3D view on the right. I'm going to close everything else. Hit OK. Now my application is going to rearrange so that I have my map on my left hand side uh, window and my 3D view on the right. Um, from the scene tree, I'm going to remove the clutter on the map a little bit. So let me hide this time slice. I can hide this horizon, hide the fault and the layers even. Uh, right. Uh, let's just hide the tree so I get maximum viewing area. Okay, so now the map and the 3D view, uh, it's more than just opening sections in, in the 3D view. I can turn this seismic overlay option on and this shows me all of the op all of the sections that are open in different 3d views and i can see them on my map and i can grab this section and i can move it so i can i can place it anywhere on the map same thing for my inline i can grab it and move it anywhere on the map or i can draw an arc line on this map and send it to my 3d view and that's going to create an outline here um, i can adjust these nodes uh, directly on the map so I can modify my art line. I can pick up my art line and put it at a new location. Um, I can even draw probes so I can draw a probe on my map, uh, send it to my 3D view. I can resize this probe and it's going to resize in the 3D view as well. I can make it smaller. I can even move it to a new location so it's just going to take that probe and put it at a new location. So a lot of interaction between your 3D view and your map view uh, when you uh, when you have the seismic section overlay uh, turned on. So we have some very powerful visualization tools and you can use these tools to carry out your everyday interpretation tasks like picking horizons and faults. Um, so if you want to pick a horizon, I'm just going to close everything else. Let's sort of zoom in here. All right, so if I want to pick a horizon, for example, uh, the I'll go to the horizon tab view. Right? So this is where everything related to horizons can be found. I have uh, the ability to create horizons, set the active horizon, different picking modes that are available, and then the auto trackers. So everything that has anything to do with horizons can be found in the horizons tab. Uh, so if you want to pick this interface, for example, this uh, as a horizon, the first thing you'll do is you can create a new horizon here. I'm just going to call it H1, uh, give it a uh, different color, set all of these different parameters. Um, you have even more advanced parameters available for your auto picking. You can set those here as well. And once you have all of your parameters set up, you can hit the create button and that's going to create that horizon and add it to your scene as well. If I, of course I can't see it because there are no picks associated with it. And that's why you get this helpful message in your scene tree as well, showing you that although the horizon is added in your, in your scene, you can't see it at the moment because there are no picks available for it. To make your picks, you can uh, you can go to the uh, you can enable different pick modes. So we have uh, a lot of different manual modes available to mark your seed picks. Uh, so the first one I'm going to show you is the polygon pick mode. So I can pick along my horizon here, double click to commit my picks, and that's going to make my picks, and they are going to appear. On your section if you if you make a mistake like i have clearly over here i can go to the erase section and i can edit this horizon to remove these picks 
I can choose a different mode like the drag mode for example and I can sort of make these picks here uh, and I, then adjust those picks. And now let's open and inline here and continue picking along this inline. That's going to mark my picks on this side, mark my picks on this side and I can move this inline to a new location and then continue marking. Now of course if you're Picking a horizon of any, you know, reasonable size, uh, the, the manual mode is not really going to work for you. Uh, so we also have the 2D auto tracker, which sort of, if you can just click here, it's going to uh, run, your, run the auto tracker and pick the horizon along that entire section. And you can also see your progress on the map. So if I add this horizon to the map, uh, I, can, I can use this button to add my active horizon to the map. Uh, Go to the map view, use the horizon ribbon, let me add H1 here, and now you can see your picks as they uh, show up on the map as well. So if I move my inline to a new location, zoom in here, pick this, and now that pick is also going to show up on my map. So let's pick a few more picks on our cross line, move this here, zoom in, make our pick, navigate the section here. Zoom, pick. So I can continue making my picks, and all of those picks are also, of course, added, updated on the map, and I can also see a surface starting to create uh, in the 3D view. Now these are all my seed picks. These are picks that I've manually marked, um, and I want, and I'm going to call them my seed picks. So these are going to be used to create a surface. So now, if you have, when you have enough seed picks, you can run the auto tracker. I'm going to hit correlate, and that's going to do its thing, and it's going to create. Yeah, it's going to run the auto tracker. It's going to create a horizon surface for me, and I can see that in my 3D view, and I can see that in my map view as well. So I have this 3D surface here, and you can see also exactly the extents of it uh, in the map view. So the auto tracker ran and ran the surface. Now, if you don't like what your auto tracker did, and you don't want to keep these picks, you can go to the remove picks option, uh, use the th remove 3D auto picks, and it's going to get rid of all the picks that you just made. Um, now on the map view, we also have the ability to, to uh, specify an area and then restrict your auto picking into the in that area. So I can use a rectangular or a polygon area. I can create that area here. And now when I run my auto tracker, it's just going to create that surface inside the area that I specify. So once it's complete, now you can see that this uh, the the Horizon was created just for the area that I specified. Um, and this applies to removing picks as well. So if I can create another area, so I can create a polygon, for example, and I can say that I want to remove everything that falls outside this polygon. So I'm going to switch this to outside, go to remove picks, and I'm going to remove all my 3D auto picks that fall outside this polygon. And when I remove my picks, now the map is going to be updated, and I'm just keep the picks that fell inside the polygon. Same thing for my 3D view. I can just see the surface now uh, in that polygon shaped area that I created on my map. Um, also, you can interact directly with this, more directly with this surface, both in the 3D and the map views. So I have this option called surface arrays where I can directly erase my horizon here uh, in the 3D view. So if there is an area that I don't like, I can just take this eraser tool and I can update my horizon to remove uh, that part here directly. Uh, same thing on the map, I can use this surface erase tool on the map as well to edit uh, my picks directly on my map. And it's going to remove all of the picks uh, that I don't like and I don't want to see. So, so very easy to pick horizons in the 3D viewer. Uh, same thing, same story for faults. Uh, if you want to pick uh, faults, uh, you'll have to go to the faults ribbon where you can create faults, do everything associated uh, with a fault. Um, I'm just going to okay, I'm just going to remove all other objects. Uh, maybe align this a little bit so that we can see it better. Let's find a fault that we want to pick. Um, let's navigate here. Let's say we want to pick this particular fault. Okay. Um, also on the map on the hide this horizon so that uh, doesn't get in the way. Okay, uh, so the first thing I have to do is I have to create a fault. So I go to this faults tab, go to the create ribbon, 
and I can create my font. I'm going to call it F1, give it a color. Let's say I'm going to call it, give it a green color. Okay, and now I can start making my text. So from the font ribbon, I can set, sorry, I didn't create. Let me create this again. Green, click create. Okay, so the font is now created. Uh, it's been added to the scene as well. If I go to my inventory tree, I can see that in the scene tree, in scene tree, I have uh, uh, the fault here, which is now comes up, uh, but you can't see it because it's got a, uh, it's got no picks in it. So I have this helpful message here again telling me that I can't pick the fault. Um, I can't display the fault rather because there are no picks in it. Uh, I can pick the fault. I just turn on the pick fault mode, and now I can mark my picks uh, along the section. And that's going to, uh, you know, pick my the first segment of my fault. I can also add this fault to my map so that I can see this as it's being picked. Um, and there it is. There's my fault that I picked. I can even add another three D view so I can go to my layouts, choose maybe this layout where I have my main three D view on the left, and I have my map view and a replica of my three D view in the right. Uh, hit OK. And that's going to rearrange my view so that I can <clears throat> I can see how my uh, my surface is being created in this separate 3D view, uh, and I can see the lateral surface here on the map view. So when I move my section, for example, I can zoom in, I can make my picks, and that's going to create my false surface. And you can see how that surface is being created in in this uh, in this additional 3D view. So you can see exactly how the surface is being created as I move my inline across, keep picking this fault, and it's going to create, uh, it's going to add uh, segments to this fault, and it's going to keep picking it. Now, of course, I can also edit my picks. So I can, if I don't like a particular pick, for example, this one, I can just right click and I can remove the entire segment. That's going to delete this segment. Or I can right click here, I can edit my fault segment, and I can just adjust the nodes. Uh, so I can zoom in a little bit here, and I can grab this. And I can move this up a little bit. If I don't want, if I don't like the location here, I can. And and the surface is updated on the fly and created uh, as I uh, as I change uh, as I change my picks. Uh, and finally, so basically, again, very easy to picture faults. Uh, in, in, in the 3D viewer, see exactly how, what the surface is doing, how it's being created uh, as you pick it. You can look at it on your map in a separate 3D view as well. And now that I have my view all set up and I want to maybe save this work and come back to it uh, at a later time, I can save this view state uh, as a session. So I'm just going to give it a name called Fort Interpretation. And I'm going to hit save. And now it's going to save this view state and if I come back to it, so for example, if I lose my work, I can turn this off. Uh, and when I come back to it, I can choose to open my session. And it's going to restore uh, my work from exactly where I left it off. So it's going to uh, open that and I'm going to get exactly the same view state with the views arranged just as I wanted them to be. All right, so that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Um, uh, today, as we have some very powerful visualization capabilities introduced in our new uh, GWAS Geophysics package, uh, which lets you view things in 3D, in lines, cross lines, all your seismic data, horizons, faults, wells. Uh, you can also use this environment to interpret data in 3D, picture horizons, picture faults. We've made significant improvements to our velocity modeling. We've added an updated map and tried to present everything to you in a very modern, beautiful, intuitive workflow so that you don't waste time looking for options and everything is right there in front of you when you need it. Um, so thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening. Um, if you have any more questions, send us an email at support at lmkr.com. You can also find more information on our website.